The RTX 3090 Ti, the once most powerful consumer GPU you can buy, has been dethroned. Yes, enters the GeForce RTX 4090. Powered by NVIDIA's latest Ada Lovelace architecture GPU and 24 gigs worth of GDDR6 memory, the 4090 offers a big performance gain over its predecessors. But just how powerful it is compared to both the RTX 3090 and RTX 3090 Ti? Let's find out. We have put together this review by testing the RTX 4090 against both the RTX 3090 Ti and 3090. Similar to the 3090 Ti, Nvidia recommends at least a 850 watt power supply as the 1490 too has a rated TDP of 450 watt. You can refer to the list right here for all the components we've used in this test. Starting off with the games benchmark, we have tested a handful of games with the RTX 4090 all the way from 1080p to 4K with the highest graphics settings. For games with DLS features, we will go for the quality preset and ray tracing at Ultra, if available. I don't know why you would want to spend 1599 and play games at 1080p with this card, but hey, we got the numbers here for those of you who need it. The 1490 is way overpowered for that resolution. Hence, 4K gaming is where the 1490 shines the most, I say, easily maintaining above 100 FPS on most of the title we tested while we see the 3090 and 3090 Ti struggle to maintain that. For the raster performance alone, 1490 is crushing it on pretty much every title we have tested. It's so powerful that you start to see the frame rate limitations either by the game itself or CPU bottleneck. For example, Deathloop and Watch Dogs Legions. It gives us almost the same performance across all resolution with the 4090. Unlike 3090 and 3090 Ti, which shows a consistent FPS drop as the resolution goes up. Then we have crazy FPS from Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p and 1440p resolutions. Moving on to the ray tracing performance, as DLSS is technically the way to go if you really want to enjoy the best ray tracing gaming experience. We will be focusing on DLSS plus ray tracing performance if the games allow. If not, we'll just let ray tracing run all the way. For all the games we have ray tracing enabled at the highest preset, Metro Exodus and Cyberpunk 2077 are the only two games that goes under 100 FPS mark while the rest easily maintain at 100 FPS mark above. Although they're below the 100 FPS mark, the average FPS is still relatively high and you can still enjoy a smooth 4K RTX on gaming experience without any hiccups. Yes! Now looking at how much the 4090 leads in the gaming performance, I'll say this is the card that easily goes on the recommended list if you're going for a full-on 4K gaming. Now, as for DLSS 3, well, it's one new thing that Nvidia introduced this time with the RTX 40 series cards. You might be wondering, what warrants this version number increment? As expected, it is an upgraded version of DLSS that is only exclusive to the RTX 40 series GPU, as it is dependent on the 4th gen tensor cores an optical flow accelerator to significantly improve the overall performance while keeping things look nice. While DLSS 3 is still fairly new, we managed to capture some samples on Cyberpunk 2077 and the Lyra game for a quick preview. Now, from the sample footage here, we can see that the performance gain is actually significant. While the difference in graphics quality is almost unnoticeable, unless you're being very nitpick on that. 
More games with DLSS3 support and support for existing games is on its way, so we'll have some separated content for that in the future. Stay tuned for that. Now, for the synthetic benchmarks. We have tested all three cards with 3D Mark and benchmarks that focus on rendering works and in 3D Mark, the RTX 4090 scores almost doubled in Time Spy, Time Spy Extreme, and Port Royal, as well as FPS that almost doubled in DLSS feature tests and DirectX ray tracing feature tests than its predecessors. We can also see similar patterns in Unigen Superposition Benchmark, where the RTX 4090 just scores almost two times more than both 3090 and 3090 Ti. For benchmark that is more towards rendering work, in example, V-Ray benchmark, Octane Bench 2020, and Blender benchmark, we can see that the score is two times better across the chart. That's a big gain, I would say. Now, for all the performance we can see from this card, what's the thermal and power? This too is what excites me the most. To my surprise, we are unable to get the RTX 4090 to go beyond 64 degrees Celsius with firm up test this time. And this is actually my first time seeing the furry donut animation running so smooth. And that's on 8K resolution. Wow. Now the highest recorded GPU load temperature and hotspot temperature is at 75 degrees Celsius and 86 degrees Celsius respectively, which is achieved using Unigine Superposition Benchmark on 8K optimized preset. So this is definitely way much better than what we've initially anticipated and it's actually reasonable this time. Apart from the temperature, the power draw is another thing to take note of. While it's true that it's still easily drawing 450 watts on load just like the RTX 3090 Ti, the performance it can deliver is almost double. In terms of power efficiency, we've prepared a simple graph for this and from the graph, we can see that the RTX 4090 is actually capable of up to 42% more power efficient than the 3090 Ti. Okay, so we have seen what kind of performance the RTX 4090 can deliver and here's what I think. Yes, finally a powerful GPU for me to play Minecraft with RTX on without any starters. This is not a joke. The RTX 4090 is a real beast and I actually doubted myself a couple of times during the test, thinking that I got the settings wrong, but actually it's not. Seriously, I can see that the existing hardware and games I have right now is not fully ready for the RTX 4090. Well, aside from content creation work that will probably benefit the most from it at this time, of course. The temperature is reasonable for a Founders Edition card, yes, especially when the hotspot temperature is no longer the alarming 90 to 100 degrees Celsius like what we have seen in the RTX 3090 back then. So if the Founders Edition card is doing such a good job, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the partners can deliver with their custom design when we can finally get our hands on one or two. Now, the only thing that I'm not a fan of is the four PCIe 8 pins to one 12V HPWR adapter, or you call it PCIe 5 power adapter, because uh, that will make cable management a hell. So I recommend going for the new ATX 3.0 power supply that is ready with the 12V HPWL cable. So price-wise, yes, some can argue that the price that's almost 1600 US dollars is a hefty price to pay for. But it's just so powerful and I will not even hesitate 
to recommend it if you have that budget for a new GPU upgrade. And heck, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I would really get one for myself if I can actually afford it. So, what's your thoughts on the RTX 4090? Do let us know in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys again very soon.